So ladies and gentlemen, today on Screenshots, we're going to look at the Battle of the White Earps in the 1990s, and we're going to talk about the victorious version of Doc Holliday in one of those movies over the, uh, the other version. Now, if a lot of people do remember the mid-1990s, there was a dueling producers going on. Uh, Kirk Russell did a White Earp movie called Tombstone, which is very, very good. And Kevin Costner tried uh, a Wyatt Earp movie called, accidentally, Wyatt Earp, that, uh, that didn't have much uh, in a way of critical acclaim, but uh, for me, uh, has stood the te te test of time, was a box office success. But both movies were basically uh, a lot of key actors playing the Earps, but I think uh, Tombstone was better, and i tell you why. Dennis Quaid was a very, uh, you know, uh, usable version of Doc Holliday, a little bit too macho. But the Val Kilmer version of uh, Doc Holliday in Tombstone uh, was so underrated. Uh, Academy Award should have came his way, but he was kind of snubbed. Now, when Val Kilmer says, you know, I'm your huckleberry, basically the literal translation, the old 1800 slang or the 19th century slang is that I'm the right man for the job. And this movie he was. In every scene he did, uh, he played kind of a foppish, card-playing, womanizer version of Doc Holliday, who was, uh, of course, in real life, uh, was a tuberculosis sufferer, and Kilmer played that to the hilt. There was a time, ladies and gentlemen, his dear land, that Val Kilmer was the best Aboriginal actor out there. He did uh, a whole bunch of movies, including Batman, the Jim Morrison movie, The Doors, uh, the Saint, uh, a lot of uh, key characters, and Val Kilmer really brought it. Now, with having Sam Elliott and Bill Pullman and, you know, Kurt Russell as your co-stars in the uh, the Earp gang, or the, uh, the Earp, uh, you know, uh, and Billy Zane is in the movie too, he had a great performance, and Jason Priestley and everybody else. But there are scenes in here that you have to look at two or three or four times to see what he's trying to bring forth with Doc Holliday. Does, is Doc acting like this because he's no he's dying from tuberculosis? Is he trying to have one uh, great uh, level of uh, bromance with uh, the White Earp character? Why is Doc Holliday drinking himself to death? Did, did he drink and cause his tuberculosis? Why is he basically uh, slumming it where he basically could be making more money or having a better life someplace else? Uh, Kilmer plays it up in many, many levels. His Doc Holliday has a great connection with the Kurt Russell White Earp because it seems he had he speak in a shorthand to look out for each other. And I, if I'm not mistaken, even though uh, Kurt Russell never uh, had uh, quite a few brothers, he considered Doc Holliday like a surrogate brother, like someone who basically knew him and knew how to react to his situations. Now, the villains in this piece, Michael Bean, Powers Booth, everybody else are just tremendous. It's an extremely well cast, cast movie. It's a man's movie. And Val Kilmer plays Doc Holliday to such a level where, you know, it should have been a, a prequel. There would obviously never be a sequel. But it's too bad you couldn't do a prequel to Tombstone just with a Doc Holliday character. I think it would have been great. Now, why didn't Val Kilmer get more recognition for the part? I really don't know. Because maybe people were talking more about the battling White Earps rather than the, what should have been the battling Doc Holliday. To do a White Earp movie justice, you got to have a very good character playing Doc Holliday. And Val Kilmer hit it out in the park. But the 2019 Val Kilmer, he's, he's aged a little bit. He's had uh, some health problems. But Val Kilmer, circa 1992 to 95, man, he was just eating up scenery. And he ate up scenery a lot in the 80s with Top Gun and, and uh, you know, uh, the different uh, uh, Top Secret and the various, uh, what do you call, youth movies he did. But for me, Val Kilmer is pound for pound one of the best Aboriginal performers of all time to the level of Johnny Depp and Burke Lancaster. Very underrated at times, even though he did take some strange roles through the years. But this was his marquee role. If Val G Kilmer dies tomorrow, you will say Star, Star of Tombstone. They may not say Batman, uh, they may not say Jim Morrison, but it will say who made the modern version of Tombstone uh, a classic cult movie. And that's what his performance does here. So uh, I want everybody to uh, look up Tombstone when it appears on AMC or on DVD. If you haven't seen it, uh, watch it if you love Westerns. And it had a little, like the Doc Holliday uh, he played was sort of like a tribute to the, the Zane Gray style of writing that 
we grew up in in Northern New Brunswick, including Gravelil and Jack River and Lauren. And uh, maybe that's why the movie is uh, still so popular. But uh, there's some scenes in here, like I said, uh, it's like an artist's conception of what the uh, the, the Dalton gang and uh, the Europe, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, you know, legal criminals, because that's what they were. They were martial, sure, but they broke the law as much as the people were fighting the criminals. So on this beautiful day where spring has arrived, ladies and gentlemen, in Carlton County, we tell you, keep your stick in the ice, and uh, my condolences to Tampa Bay, but as we like to say in Montreal, sorry but not sorry. I'm glad you swept because instead of throwing Montreal a little bit of love, we can make the playoffs, you let Columbus beat you, and you'll never win in 62 games and lose in the first round. That's not a team. That's just, a, you know, an asterisk. Anyway, have a great day. Bye.